After our first project has been successfully created, we are greeted with the actual EDIUS interface, and this looks much like the screen I have here, although it is also dependent on the chosen resolution or size of the screen. One thing to note, however, is that your main screen will probably vary from what you see here, due to the fact that for this tutorial, I have chosen a somewhat smaller resolution so that the entire EDIUS interface appears on the screen, and hence it appears somewhat condensed, especially in the menu bar. When we are working later with menus, I will adjust my settings to allow you to see everything more clearly. Before I actually start work in EDIUS, I would like to show you the main elements or features of the EDIUS user interface. To the top right of the main screen, we have the bin window. The bin shows us all the used media in our EDIUS project. These are items such as video files, images and music and any other data used in the project. In the currently chosen standard layout, you can switch to show other information in this top right window, but we will go into this later when we actually need this information. In the bottom right hand corner, we have an information area which will later on show us information concerning the currently selected object. We will also go into detail about this at a later time. Then we come to a relatively large area, and this is filled with the timeline. The timeline is where later on we will arrange our video, image and audio media. And last but not least we come to the preview window. This window shows us, dependent on context, either the image or video in the bin window or the material in the timeline. It is worth mentioning that in principle these windows can be adjusted freely to a certain extent. To do this, when we click in the region between the windows, and the mouse pointer looks like this, we can move the dividing bar by holding the mouse button down and moving the mouse. In this way we can adjust this area. This is also the same for the other dividing bars. This gives you the option to define how large or small certain windows are, depending on what you are working on at any given moment. One issue with this, especially with inexperienced users, is that a certain window can disappear by accident. For example, by clicking this cross, the information window can be hidden, or likewise with this cross, the bin window is hidden, and it is then missing from our main window. A relevant tip that I would like to show you is that in the view menu, we can reselect the timeline or bin window. Or another useful tip is that by using the window layout function and selecting normal, we can recall the basic layout so that all relevant windows for our work are displayed. Finally, I'd like to focus on one point, which is the possibility to use another mode for the preview window, which we can activate via view dual mode. Now, I don't have a single preview window, but two preview windows, one window for the material in the bin and the other preview window to display what is in the timeline. Two separate preview windows is obviously an advantage, but for now, in this tutorial, we will continue working in single mode, as we can see one preview window better due to the fact that our recording resolution is limited.